Well, hello, Woodman, and happy Labor Day weekend. Isn't it going to be nice to have the kids home for a change? Oh, that's, that maybe didn't land the way I thought it would. You know, in this digital age, you might be watching this and Labor Day's already come, regardless of when you're viewing. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we have something special in store for you. Uh, today we're going to celebrate some people who are going to publicly identify with Christ and commit themselves to following him through the waters of baptism. You know, since this beginning of this pandemic, here in Colorado anyways, churches were labeled as essential businesses. And, and that's not just because of the practical benefit we bring to so many in our community, but so that we could minister to the needs of our congregation. And one of the ways we do that is providing opportunities for people to get baptized. Now, because of the pandemic, we are going to do it a little different than we normally do. Uh, first, we're outside, uh, not inside. Uh, we've capped our attendance at under 250, which is what the state asks for outside gatherings. Uh, we're using multiple tubs today, uh, not just one. And you can't see it now, but families were trying to stay a safe distance apart from one another. What's cool is none of those small steps are going to diminish in any way the spiritual magnitude of what is going to take place. You know, baptism is one of those greatest for you, for me's we get to do. And if Woodman's home, you know, in our family, the for you, for me gift is so important. It was just my wife's birthday this week, and she wanted a turntable, a record player. And I was happy to get it because I get to listen to the albums, too. So the for you, for me in baptism is that followers of Jesus are commanded to be baptized. Followers need to do this out of obedience to Christ. And we, the church, the people of God, we're commanded to go out and make disciples, in part by baptizing them. So this is a win-win day for us all. By celebrating baptism together, we are doing our part here and now to help fulfill the Great Commission. We read, and if you have a Bible, you can turn to Matthew 28. Beginning at verse 18, this is at the tail end. It says this, And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Those are the final words we have Jesus speaking as recorded in Matthew's Gospel. And they were those first disciples' marching orders. And it's something they took seriously. It's something they took. They committed themselves to it. And here we are. Jesus has ascended into heaven. But these have been our marching orders too, ever since that day. And the first thing you might note is the Great Commission is pretty all-encompassing. It says Jesus has all authorities. It says we are to reach all nations. It says that we are to teach all he has commanded. And we do so confidently, knowing that he is always with us as followers of Christ. Every single one of us is called to go and make disciples. And here, disciples are characterized by two different things. One, by being baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And two, by observing all that Jesus has commanded us. The thing that we all have to note and to take seriously as these people who are about to be baptized have. This is non-negotiable. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples. Jesus begins by affirming, I have this authority in heaven and on earth, and this is what I'm asking you to do. Go, therefore, and make disciples. Jesus is the sovereign Lord of the universe. 
We don't make him that. Regardless of what you may think he is, that is who he is right now. He died for the sins of the world, and God raised him victoriously from the grave, and we need to confess him as Lord. We need to invite him to forgive us our sins. We need to commit our lives to him out of obedience and follow him. We don't get to choose. This is what he who has authority has called us to. And you see both of these elements detailed in the Great Commission and reflected in the act of baptism. Baptism is the public declaration of one's faith in Jesus. Uh, many of us came to faith in Christ in, in, in our, on our own. We prayed a prayer, maybe with an individual, generally not in front of a crowd. Baptism is the public declaration of the inward decision that we have already made. And it is the public commitment that moving forward, I seek to live the life God has called me to live. That will be perhaps something you hear in some of these stories. Not everybody who's going to get baptized today came to faith a week ago. Uh, they came to faith in Jesus. Uh, they believed upon him. But this step, it means something. It is a public declaration of my belief in Christ and my desire to be obedient from here on out. To be clear, baptism does not make anyone a disciple. But baptism does characterize a disciple. You could accept Christ's forgiveness for your sins right now. You could right now acknowledge him as Lord and say, I realize that I've messed up. I know that I have fallen short, but because of your death on my behalf, forgive me. And you could be saved. You could do that, and then the next big thing on your calendar would be, and now I'm going to get dunked. But there is nothing that precludes you from doing that at this moment. But if you do make that choice, baptism needs to be inevitable. Baptism characterizes disciples. If you claim to be a Christian, but refuse to be baptized... You're living in direct opposition to what Jesus has called you to do. There really is not a New Testament category for someone who believed upon Christ and then refused to be baptized. Certainly many of us are maybe familiar with that thief on the cross who Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. And that guy had no opportunity to be baptized. And he was going to heaven. This does not save people, but people who have been saved and seek to live their life in obedience do take this step. It is a two-part process. Making disciples. Baptism is one thing that we do, and it does get crossed off the list. Every person who gets baptized here today will never need to be baptized again. They are old enough to know what they're acknowledging they're old enough to commit themselves to Jesus. And the baptism piece in their spiritual walk will have a check beside it. But the second part will not be concluded today. The second part is following him. We, at this moment, moving forward, for everyone that gets baptized, tomorrow will be a challenge. They will need to follow Jesus tomorrow and the day after and the day after and the day after. And when they fail, they remember their baptism knowing that Jesus died for them. This is not something that they did. Christ paid the penalty for their sin. And they remember the commitment they made. That even though I may have been knocked down, even though I may have taken a step back, I have committed myself to observe to the best of my ability through the power of his spirit to do all that he has commanded us. Uh, this, this is an exciting day in the church. This is church 101 kind of stuff. I hope, I hope today encourages you. 
you are going to see several stories of men and women, young and old, professing their faith and committing themselves to follow Jesus. And because we have so many, you won't even get to see them all today. And so in subsequent weeks, you will again just see the life transformation and the commitment that men and women have made in obedience to Christ. And I hope it encourages you, and I hope it encourages you for the part that you play if Woodman is home. You have been teachers, you have been guides, you have been friends. You've been spiritual brothers and sisters, and this is something to celebrate. And I hope this challenges you. I hope this will encourage you to be obedient to Jesus Christ if you have not yet been. That maybe seeing these stories of people much like yourself will be used of the Spirit to remind you you need forgiveness for your sin. And that one day, perhaps not outside, but one day we'll see you in the waters of baptism. You could confess Christ as Lord now. But maybe there's another group of us and those of us who've known Jesus for a while, perhaps our baptism's been far in the past. And the events of our times, the division and the disunity, the, the burdens. Maybe this Labor Day weekend, you're just kind of blown out with it all. My prayer for you is the same for me. I'm praying that when we see this fresh zeal, when we see the Holy Spirit still at work in transforming lives, I pray that that would cause us to rise up. I pray that it would cause us to hold our heads up high and remind ourselves that God is still at work and the Great Commission is still being accomplished. And that is exciting stuff. So we're gonna worship our Lord. We're going to sing and then we're going to hear and celebrate and then we'll sing some more. This is going to be a great service. Get ready. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus, the one who has brought this all together, the one who gave his life in our place. God, I ask that you would meet with us now. Lord, that you would be high and lifted up as it is your name that we praise. Father, would you use this to draw others to faith? Would you use this to encourage us in our faith? And be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. together church about who we are through Jesus Christ who loved us who gave himself for us who makes us new who am I that the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me to know his love for his love for me, who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed, I'm a child of God, yes, I am, amen, free at last, he has ransomed me, his grace was While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free and deep. And I'm a child of God. Yes, I Father's house, there 
the truth of the Lord. Why don't you guys have a seat and we're going to welcome our first round of baptisms. We all know 2020 has been a really crazy year, but interestingly enough, it's one of the biggest years that I felt Jesus working in my life every step of the way. Even in these times of hurt in the world, Jesus is always working. So over the past two years, year, I have really felt God giving me some direction in my life. Um, and he's really helped me kind of distance myself from some of the wrong people that I knew I was hanging out with. And then he's helped me bring um, me closer to the right people. And then along with that, he's helped me to realize um, to not follow some of the ugly ways of the world, especially, especially right now with all that's going on. I've really felt, I haven't felt bothered by it. I haven't felt um, worried about it. Um, and I've just felt that God's got this. Isaiah, why don't you tell everyone why you want to be baptized? I want to get baptized because I love God and I know Jesus died on the cross to forgive my sins. God has provided for me in so many ways that I never ever would have dreamed to be able to see His power like this in the last 15 months. And you know, I've been through an incredible journey of forgiveness, of finding forgiveness that He's brought me through and it just gives me such a deeper understanding of the weight of what it means when Jesus died to take my sin. And although I'll never to truly grasp the weight of what that means, I know that I've grown in my understanding personally. And I want to share that with my church family. And I want to tell them that God has always been there and that I've dedicated my life to Him. And I. I'm just trying my best to seek first the kingdom of God, and I'm really excited to share that with this church. I want to serve God and love Him for the rest of my life. And when I accepted Him as my Savior, it just opened up a whole new world, and I really want to live in this world. August, can you tell us why you want to be baptized today? To let people know that I accepted God in my heart. Well, it's because um, the Lord says so, and I've wanted to for a long time. And that's why I want to be baptized. And well, uh, two weeks ago, I was, while well, with my husband and uh, some dear friends of ours, Dan and Jill, I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart as Lord and Savior, and I'm ready to start my new life. I had grown up 
learning about Jesus. My parents were talking to me about forgiveness, and then they started talk to, talking to me about like becoming a Christian, and I started asking a lot of questions, and that led to me becoming a Christian. Now, why don't you tell us why you want to get baptized today? I want to get baptized because I want people to know that I'm following God and that I'm going to continue to, fall, to trust Him every step of the way. Would you share with everyone why you want to get baptized, Gabe? So I gave my life to Christ a little over two years ago while I was up at college. Um, I'm just so thankful that God has led me to Woodman Valley, um, where I've connected with some awesome people and some awesome kids in the kids' ministry, and I can't wait to finally publicly declare my faith in Christ. I signed up for summer huddles, and uh, I found out by watching another girl on the tape that she was baptized, and her story kind of related to mine in a way, uh, that she um, struggled with the law and stuff. Mine was a little different, but I still had, I could share her experiences. Um, and it touched me, and that night I, I looked to see if I could sign up to be baptized because I wanted to scream uh, to the heavens, you know, that God, changed my life and I I want to um, public make, make it public and I wanted to just see if I could touch somebody else's life that that woman did for me and so buddy with your uh profession of faith in Jesus and your obedience to his command it's our pleasure Doug and I to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Based on your profession of faith and your desire to follow Jesus and to obey Him, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In light of your profession of faith and all of our conversations, we are so pleased to be able to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, is forgiveness for your sin. It's dad and I's real honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is my joy, uh, because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, your Savior, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because of your profession of faith, because of your relationship with Christ, it is Tim and I's just honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Based on your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, your belief in Him, it is Jessa and I's privilege to get to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
because of your profession and faith in Jesus Christ, it is me and your dad's privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because of your declaration of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's Dad and I's honored to be able to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And based on your profession, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize you today. And based on your public profession and your desire to want to let the world know that you want to live for Jesus, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let's respond. Let's sing some songs that celebrate what we've just witnessed here. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning world behind me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning Still I will follow Though none go with me Still I will follow Though none go with me Still I will follow No turning back No turning back I've decided I have decided To follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. No turning. Back. No turn that once was crowned with thorns is crowned in glory now the Savior knelt to wash our feet and now at his feet we bow the one who wore our sin Now robed in majesty, in the radiance of perfect love, and now shines for all to see. And 
Worship time with a song that I think is perfect with this. Yeah, on two and four. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could bear me that kind of weight? It was my team. Till I met you Then but not Alive Failures 
I try to hide It was my I hope you've been encouraged. Now, the stories that you've seen today are, are but a fraction of the stories that you're going to see in our services in the week to come. Uh, we have been called to go out into this world and to make disciples, uh, to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them to observe all that Jesus commanded us. This is a part of it. Uh, people have begun a journey today. People are continuing that journey today, and you could get on that same program. And if you've heard anything that gives you cause to ask some questions, or if you desire to be baptized, we would love the opportunity to get that done. For those of us who are here in attendance, it's been a while since we've had a live audience for this. So if you would, please stand. And as you go, go with these words. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. God bless you and have a great week. And God bless all you and have a great week.